Hey guys. So today I have a new video for you. It's about IPsec tunnels. It was a requested video. So today I'm going to show you how to do this. Before I go on to that though, I want to say thank you to Robert for becoming part of my Patreon. That will help as the future goes on here to doing videos that um, for stuff that I have to buy for the channel, such as the subscription for my Untangled that I use to show you guys these videos. And potentially um, in the future when I grow a little bit bigger, I want to buy a Z4 appliance and give it to one of you guys. So thank you to Robert for uh, becoming a patron for me. And another announcement, we're at 105 subscribers. Uh, 100 subscribers in 28 days. I got the email, I was like, ooh, that's pretty good. So people are liking the videos, they're watching them. Thank you very much for that, that's good support. And uh, thank you for Untangle for sending me this nice uh, cup with some water in it. I like that. And you guys all notice that I'm wearing my nice fancy uh, long sleeve Untangled shirt. I like that. Thank you. So let's dive into this. An IPsec tunnel, we need six things. We need to know the remote IP address. We need to have the app installed. Now, just so you know, uh, the Home Pro version comes with this. The Home Basic does not. So that's one of the things that you'll have to decide. Are you going to have any IPsec tunnels or anything like that when you buy your package for the amount of money that it costs? If you don't get it, um, I'm not sure if you could add it, but I'm pretty sure you have to buy the full package first. But so you have to have the subscription for that Home Pro, which is $200 Canadian. Um, you have to know the remote subnet and you have to have phase one and phase two after that. And, oh, and a secret, you gotta make a secret, but I'm gonna show you how to do all that stuff, pretty simple. Um, I've got some stuff written down, so I don't have to go hunting for it, but the rest of it we will create as we create a uh, IPsec tunnel. Um, I use a lot of IPsec tunnels. Over there in my lab, I have a, a couple IPsec tunnels going out of town. One of them for me is I have a remote NAS somewhere else that's replicated to the one that's downstairs in my garage for my server. So off-site, if my house ever burns down, I still have all my backups. Uh, that works great. So a lot of people have um, labs at home where they want to have somewhere off-site, like maybe at mom and dad's house or somewhere at a friend's house that you trust. You could put an extra NAS that your backups are backing somewhere else. Just an example. So. Let's dive in here. Let's log into the two boxes and we will create a IPsec tunnel and go from there. So first thing we wanna do is log in here. We gotta log into our Bitwarden. Uh, before I log in, let's create a secret. So what I usually use is a generator. And right now I've got this one set to 50 characters. That should work just fine. So what we'll do is we'll copy this for our secret. We'll put it in here. So, like I said in the beginning there, we have to know a couple of things. So, we have my lab box, which is the IP address here, and here's my subnet in it. The demo box that I have set up somewhere else with an IP address is this one right here, and I created a subnet on it. So, we have most of the information. Now, we just got to create the rest. So, let's log into both of those boxes. Let's go to, to our Untangle command center. We'll log in. We gotta wait for our code to come through. There's our code. We'll log in. Okay, so down here we see two appliances. The more you have, the more obviously you're gonna have here. So we'll see the lab box is this one and then the demo box is this one, and they're both online. They both say here, green status, green light. The license, the demo box doesn't have a license, I'm just using it for an example. I've already paid money for a full working version. So, what I'm gonna do is I will click on that, we'll go remote access. Wait for it to launch. Then we'll go back to the command center and then we'll bring up the other one. We'll go remote access. I'm going to switch these around so that way I can go from left to right so I know which one's the master or my version and the other version so we don't get them mixed up. Okay, so in the paid version that I have, my lab box, we have this one right here. 
let's go to apps and I already have the IPsec version installed and it's turned on so it's ready to go excuse me the demo box will do the same thing so let's go apps IPsec oh I only got four days left of that trial so you need to turn it on too so let's go to the the main box that's going to connect to the other one or vice versa and let's create our, our first IPsec um, tunnel so the first thing I always select is bypass all traffic because we don't need any of the apps in the dashboards on either end checking that data. I mean, you can, so maybe you can turn on an app to scan for malware or viruses that go across that. I never really had an issue and I've got strict rules, so I'm pretty safe that way. We'll hop over to IPsec tunnels. Now, the main thing, when I started doing this a couple of years ago, maybe five or six years ago, is I was really stressed. I couldn't figure it out. I just didn't know. And my friend said to me, as long as you have them matched on both sides, they should connect. And the information that I just gave you, the six things that we need to make that work is what you really need to make that work. So let's go add. And as you can tell, we've got not really that much information that we need to make this work. So description, I'm going to call this IPsec to test. So we can identify it. So what we when we go back into the lister, I'll show you. It'll show you where he is. We're gonna make it a tunnel. Okay. Uh, IKVE1 is our or IKV2. We'll just leave it at the default. Always connected means that it's it's always ready to go. So you don't have to wait for it to handshake and connect. If you select the other version on demand, it won't. It'll close the tunnel traffic, but it won't. It'll be there waiting until something wants to flow across, and then it'll establish. So I always keep it that. So our local address is our WAN address of this one. And now we need to know, uh, let's see here. We need to change this to WAN address of this server. So this one is this server, so that's right. Uh, the remote of the public of the other one, which will be, let's just see here, remote host is the other box. So what we need to do is go over to our here box and we need to grab this guy and put it here. So this will be this will be the other box on the, the other end. Because the way this works is they talk with the IP addresses so they know who they're talking to, like a handshake, and then the secret, and then the phase one and phase two, and then it completes it. In simple terms, there's way more technical to that, but that's not what the video is about. The video is about getting it going and showing that. So the local identifier will be this IP address of this box. The remote identifier will be the 192, so we can just copy it out of here. I'm taking notes and I have it on my screen so I don't forget things. The remote network will be the subnet of the other side. So that will be this right here. So that box is sitting at the subnet. Okay, we'll put that in there. We already created our shared secret, so we have a secret right here. Okay, put that in there. You can use any secret you want. I just have it there. Pingable IP address will be on the other side. So we can go this address. Okay. And we have to now create our phase one and phase two. Now this, you got to make sure that they're identical on both sides. One step and they don't connect and don't work. So let's go here. We'll go encryption 256 hash SHA-512. We'll leave the defaults for the rest of it. And then the second phase, we'll go for this one right here. So we'll go, do we have 250, oh, yeah, 256 for AES, and then the hash will go 512. Okay, so we've got everything here. Now we just gotta make sure this is all the same on the other side. So what we'll do is we'll push done, save. Okay, so now we have this tunnel right here. Now let's go to the other box. We'll do the same thing. IPsec options, we've got bypass turned on. And IPsec tunnels. So now we'll go add and we'll call this IPsec to lab box because we want to make sure that we can keep this. If you have multiple VPNs or IPsec tunnels, you'll want to label them. Maybe you only have one, it's going to be obvious because it's going to be the only one in the list. So let's go through here. Um, Uh, 
we don't want to click any remote host. So now we want to go to the, we want to put in, just going through my notes so I don't make any mistakes. So, that's right. We're gonna put this into here and into here. So I have it copied. Remote load identifier is the same address that we have here. Okay, remote network. I've copied all this over so it makes my life easier. Uh, so the remote network is the 10.199, so 24. We gotta grab our secret. Right, put it in there. Ping address, we'll wanna grab the remote. You don't have to put a ping address in, it'll work just fine without it. And then we have to do our phase one and phase two. So we did 256, SHA 512. And then we'll go 256, 256. Make sure I did that correctly. Now, if this doesn't work, you can always go back and look. So let's go done, save. Let's go back to the first one and make sure that uh, we're there. So if we go status, refresh. Oh, I gotta make sure this is turned on on the other side. Is it in, on on the other side? Yep, it's on. So I've made a small mistake and I'm pretty sure I remember where I made my mistake, which was under IPsec tunnels here. 256 SHA 512. IPsec tunnels. Edit. Yeah, there it is right there. There's my mistake. See? One mis one thing off and it won't connect. So we go done. Save. Status. Wait a couple seconds. And we're active. Now on the other side there, I set something up. So I have to show you that the gate, so this is up and working for you guys. So before I go anywhere, I have to plug in my laptop to that network to show you that there's something online here. So let's grab one of my fancy cables here. I'm really addicted to these things. I get teased about it at work because they're, it's just a cable, but I like nice cables and they work and they're flexible. They, those nice cat six thin cables. So what we need to do is turn off the network card in this laptop. Uh, up here, we'll go ethernet. Actually, no, I can just reach over and turn it off, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's go like this and go here. Disable for now. We're not gonna have any internet connection, so let's plug this into here. We'll just scoot my chair over here to the lab that's in the rack over here. Okay, done. Put this cable over here. We'll wait a couple seconds, make sure we're on the right subnet. And we're already online. I see it down here. So right here, we're down. So on the other end, there's a switch and I've given it this subnet right here. So if I go to this address in the address bar, minus one and we'll go two, I should bring up an HP switch. If it's still plugged in. Let's log into the firewall here and see config. Network, DHCP server, 10.199.8.2. It's not there. Can we ping it? That just somebody unplugged it. Let's make sure.
make sure our tunnels are up. Maybe they went offline. Log into the Tango box this side locally. Config, oops, config, IPsec. Tunnels are still up. This one. Did I make a mistake somewhere? IPsec. IPsec tunnel. Local. Remote. No, I think I got these max mix, mixed up, I think, maybe here. No. Oh, yeah, there's the mistake right there. I made a mistake. So remote network is this. That's why it's not working. Done. Save. Let's go back to the app and make sure. Yep, it's still active. Now let's see if we can get to it. There we go. Another mistake. So now we just have to log in. So I put a switch on the other end. It's not nothing else plugged into it, but it shows you that I can get from this through an IPsec tunnel to devices on the other side. Now you can make a lot of rules to do certain things, uh, but this is just a demo to show you how easy it is after you come become a little more familiar with things to get an IPsec tunnel up and running. So I hope that helps somebody. Um, if you guys have questions or you have more requests, um, I'm gonna be unboxing the Untangle uh, Z4 Plus over there uh, in the next couple days here. Tomorrow's Christmas, so I don't think I'm gonna be allowed in this room. So I got the family downstairs, but that's next on the list. And then um, after that, I got a couple more that I'm going to come out with. So right now I'm going to sign off, say thank you very much for watching. And if you liked it, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down, comment, um, suggestions, um, subscribe, please. It does help. Um, and we'll go from there. So if you have uh, anything, let me know. It's snowing out right now, so I'm probably going to be... Uh, back in to go shovel my driveway but uh, i might try to get out of that because it's christmas so you have a great day thanks for watching merry christmas everybody talk to you later